Hey, what's going on Raider Nation? Welcome to another video for the Black and Silver Way. As you guys know, we defeated the San Diego Chokers on Sunday, 37-29, to which puts our team 3-3 three and three for the season, and we move up second in our division. You know, plain and simple, this game, we needed to come out and dominate. And that's exactly what we did. We went into the San Diego Chargers Stadium and we kicked their ass. We took it over in the stands. We took it over on the field. This was our first divisional game that we have won on the road since 2012 against Kansas City. This is also our best record since uh, the first six games since 2011 when Hugh Jackson was on the team and he started off 4-2. and two. So... Overall, guys, this was a really important game for us to win. We move up second in our division. The Broncos, of course, are on top. Then it's us. And, uh, you know, we put the San Diego Chargers right behind us. And the best thing about this game is I was there. I was there. I drove seven hours to San Diego just to see this game. And I partied with my SoCal fam down there. And I met up with my boy, Verver, who actually showed me everything around uh, S South Oakland, uh, you know, I, I thought we had the worst stadium in the NFL. I mean, I'm a season ticket holder for the Oakland Raiders, and I think that our stadium is very outdated. But the one thing that I did not know is how outdated Qualcomm is. I mean, their freaking their TVs in their Coliseum in the in the stadium are like this big. It's I have a bigger TV in my freaking living room than the stadium TVs, and. I was, uh, you know, down in San Diego, they have a lot of amazing craft beer down there. So I was able to bring some badass beer to the game. And, you know, all the good beer that I have, the craft beer is bottled. So I was busting out the bottles, walking around the tailgate, and cops came up to me and told me I was going to get a $300 fine because I had a bottle, not a can. So I had to pour it in a cup. So that was stupid. I seen some kids throwing a football around, like, at, like how every single family does. They bring a football to a football game, and during the pre game they're gonna play some catch the, the the freaking cops went up to the parents and told them that they could get fined and that the kids you know they could take the football away so kids aren't allowed to play catch there also since the Raiders were in town and I was up there trying to get two beers for me and my friend uh, during the game I was only allowed to get one beer and I'd have to go in the back of the line and go back through the line if I wanted to get another beer I couldn't buy two beers at a time because it was an Oakland Raider game I mean, I couldn't believe the whack-ass, you know, rules that they had at Qualcomm. And the whole tailgating aspect and everything was so... The cops were on everybody's ass. You couldn't even really, you know, take up more than your spot that you had that you parked your car at. And you couldn't be in the aisle, like, of the rows. It was horrible. Qualcomm was... is absolute joke of the NFL and I feel really bad for the San Diego Chargers on top of their fans getting uh you know every year nothing no titles no nothing they have to go to a stadium like that every single Sunday during football season that's complete bullshit so uh you know I feel bad for them and I I cannot stand the stadium but it's definitely worth going over there because there's so many Raider fans guys we took the whole stadium over I couldn't believe like when they say South Oakland it's truly South Oakland down there, guys. I could really, like, honestly say there were 70% Raider fans and there was 30% Charger fans. I don't know if they're just scared to go out there, but I'm telling you, all the Raider fans from LA and San Diego just invade that stadium. And it was pure black. I w it was nothing but Raider fans. Raider chants. Raider fans, Raider signs, everything that I saw at that game, guys, was like if we were playing in Oakland. I couldn't even tell the difference of how many Raider fans were there to opposing team. And that was their stadium. And we were straight saying, this is our house. This is our house. Like chanting it. And there were Charger fans losing their mind, like season take -a holder fans that were just yelling, flipping us all off. It was so funny to see. And it was just really good to see us go out there and kick Philip Rivers' ass and the Chokers, uh, you know, I just had a really good trip overall, guys. It was freaking amazing. Let's get into some stats. So let's start off with the offense. Derek Carr was 24 of 31 for 289 yards with three touchdowns and a passer rating of 137. Uh, you know, he's setting records. You know, he's playing really smart football. He's being the quarterback that I knew he was capable of being right when I seen him uh, last season start for us over Matt Schaub. Uh, you know, Derek Carr's the real deal. 
You know, he's playing smart football. He's only progressing throughout the weeks. He doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. And we have a great offensive line and a great communication right there with that front set to protect him because he's really not getting touched that much at all this season. And he wasn't touched that much last year. Uh, you know, he knows the players really well. He knows what they can excel at. And he knows where he wants the ball to go. And he's really putting us in good positions, guys, during the games. You know, I feel like... During the second half, of course, we'll get into that. Everything died down, but we were definitely trying to run the clock out and just seal the deal. And it wasn't his it wasn't his fault. It was the coaching staff. They switched the whole thing. They adjusted and they didn't go with the attack, attack, shotgun, shotgun, pass, pass, pass. They weren't doing that anymore when we came back from the half. They adjusted. They switched the game plan up, which was stupid because we easily could have beat them by over 40 points. But instead, we adjust, We did some adjustments and started running the ball and being conservative, which is okay. But, man, they almost caught up to us. But anyways, Derek Carr has an amazing game, and he's only pro proceeding from here. And I'm just really pumped up that we have a franchise quarterback. We finally have a franchise quarterback that's smart. It's just so nice to know that we are safe with the quarterback position. I'm going to be honest with you guys. A lot of you guys that really follow me on social media, on Instagram, and directly on this YouTube channel, you guys know I wanted Leonard Williams in the draft. You know that I like defense, and you know that my mentality is defense wins championships. And I just can't believe that Amari Cooper has been this good, this fast, uh, already in the NFL. Amari Cooper was... The smartest decision. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm telling you right now, I would have regretted it. And I am an idiot to that uh, thought that Leonard, Coop, Leonard Williams was going to be better than Amari Cooper. And Amari Cooper has proved everybody wrong in the NFL. And half of the Raider Nation that wanted Leonard Williams or whoever else, Kevin White, maybe some of you guys. But I definitely, definitely am seeing the upside to Amari Cooper. He erupts for 131 yards. Only five catches. That means this kid is getting the ball and he's making something out of it with big chunks every single time. You know, when you're a receiver, it's one thing to catch the ball. But to be a great receiver is to make something after the catch. And that's what Amari Cooper is excelling at so much right now. He is getting the biggest buzz in the NFL saying that him and Odell Beckham are going to be the new stars of the NFL. And they're saying, would you go with Odell Beckham or would you go with Amari Cooper? And the NFL is praising him. He's going to be the franchise. Uh, him and Derek are the franchise to this team in the future for years to come. And Amari Cooper is making a loud statement that he is one of the smartest, fastest, playmaking ability wide receivers in the NFL. And he's doing that. Every single game nearly, he's had over 100 yards. We haven't had a smart, hungry receiver like this, especially out of the draft, in years. In years, guys. I'm just really thrilled that Amari Cooper is excelling with Derek Carr. Uh, the chemistry is being built really fast. And I just, I, I'm just i just speechless. Like, good job to Amari Cooper. I can't praise you enough, man. And, you know, I just i am so thrilled that we actually have a playmaker like Amari. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing, guys. Good job to Amari Cooper. Another time on this uh, week. And also, I'm going to put a direct link below. He's actually a nominee for the Pepsi Rookie of the Week. So I'm going to put a link in the description. Make sure to Raider Nation, stop what you're doing, pause this video, click the link below, and go vote for our boy Amari Cooper. Also, you can't forget about Michael Crabtree catching six passes for 63 yards. Also, a out of the 63 yards, it was a 25-yard screen from Derek Carr. It was a touchdown. Uh, same thing as Amari Cooper did with the 52-yard screen from Derek Carr earlier in the game. Michael Crabtree just showing up every game. Reliable hands. He could have. Uh, the only thing I could say is he dropped one really good pass from Derek Carr that could have been like another 40-yard pass, but he ended up dropping it. But either way, guys, Michael Crabtree showing up every single game. He's being a really good leader for that for all the rookies, especially mentoring Amari Cooper. And Amari Cooper looked up to him at Texas Tech when he was younger. So Michael Crabtree, I'm going to be really angry, guys, if he keeps playing like this and we don't lock him into a big deal. He deserves a five-year contract. Michael Crabtree is playing really smart football, and he's showing up every single Sunday. 
I'm proud of a Michael Crabtree. Also, Latavius Murray has a really good game. 15 carries for 85 yards with a touchdown. Latavius Murray was able to break a few big 20-yard runs through the San Diego Chargers defense. They were completely gassed, and uh, Latavius Murray was doing his thing. Janikowski also hits three field goals, three of three, connecting from 29, 32, and 31 yards, giving him 374 conversions in his career. What a badass. So you can't forget about Clive Walford getting his first career touchdown for a 23-yard floater from Derek Carr. Derek Carr cuts the money on the ball, does a floater in between three defenders. Clive Walford catches it, walks in untouched right for a touchdown for his first career touchdown, actually. So congratulations to Clive Walford. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll see Michael Rivera, Clive Walford. I don't know who the guy is yet. I have more faith in Michael Rivera over the last couple of years. So we got to see what Clive Walford is going to bring to the table. And I just can't wait to see what's left of Clive Walford for the rest of the season. If I could give two game balls, I would give a ball to Amari Cooper. And, of course, I got to give it to my boy Malcolm Smith. Malcolm Smith, Malcolm Smith, Malcolm Smith. He was a big force in the game, guys, leading tackles for 11 solo tackles, one sack, and he also had an interception, and he put two hits on Phillip Rivers. Also, his interception should have been a pick six. Malcolm Smith is swarming the middle. What a great middle linebacker. What a freaking fantastic pickup. Uh, I'm just telling you, Malcolm Smith, guys. Man, Malcolm Smith, he is making our defense look incredible. Also, another person that you guys know that I love, I love, is DJ Hayden. <laughs> DJ Hayden finally gets his first interception of the season uh, from Phillip Rivers. So, good job to, you know, DJ Hayden for showing up today. And let's hope that DJ can, you know, build off of it for the rest of the season because he did need something like that because DJ Hayden was just going down. So, I'm just glad to see that DJ Hayden was able to build some momentum, get that interception, and I'm hoping that he shows up to the Jets, Jets, Jets game and he actually puts uh, some pressure on their wide receivers. Okay, that's going to be it for this video, guys. I don't want to bore you guys. I see that this video is over 12 minutes and usually I try to get them under 10, but I was explaining to you guys that I really had a good time in South Oakland and I just really enjoyed myself out in San Diego. Beautiful down in San Diego, but you know, Qualcomm is a shithole and fuck the San Diego Chargers. We go three and three guys and we have the Jets coming into town this Sunday and honestly, they are one of the best teams in the NFL in my opinion because they lost to the Patriots a couple days ago 23 to 30 but really they should have had an easy touchdown from Brandon Marshall and I felt like it would have they would have been able to surpass the Patriots and give them their first loss and the Patriots were playing in Foxborough so that was definitely a tough game for the Jets to stick in there and Ryan Fitzpatrick tore us apart a couple years ago against uh the him and the Bills uh, us and the Bills so Ryan Fitzpatrick is a really good quarterback and I know that they got a lot of momentum going on. And Darrell Revis is going to be very hungry on Amari Cooper. It's going to be a really good matchup. And I'm just really excited to see this. I'm going to be out there in Oakland with my boy Al Thompson. And uh, we're just going to have a really good time. I just hope that they can build off the momentum. Amari Cooper has to be able to shut off Darrell Revis and get him out of his head. Michael Crabtree and all our receivers have to show up the way they showed up in San Diego. And I feel like we do have a good chance of winning this game. We do have to really, really be careful for that defense because they are doing a lot of takeaways right now. And they're just hot. The New York Jets is a real hot team. But we're a really good team too. I'm saying we're going to sneak away with this win, guys. I feel like Oakland, we're, we haven't been this good since 2011-ish. And we're, there's a lot of momentum. There's a lot of hype right now. And we're going up in the power rankings right now. So... I just hope all this plays into a factor and we just focus on the game of football because I know that's all they have to do. Derek Carr just has to focus on the task at hand. The defense has to be executing and putting pressure on Fitzpatrick and we might be able to sneak away with this, guys. Let's go 4-3 and three, and let's go ahead and uh, just keep moving up in the power rankings. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe on the video. Share this with your friends and I will see you guys uh, next Monday. Peace out, Raider Nation.